This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. We're now going to go through and just spend a little bit of time having a look at how to deal with the acquisition and or the disposal of a subsidiary within a group statement of cash flows question. Now, in the real world, uh, there, there are likely to be acquisitions and disposals that take place during a year. You'll be glad to note that in our exam, it's going to be one or the other. It, it won't be both. You will either have an acquisition or you will have a disposal. And the, the theme tends to have been, if memory serves me right, that in the cash flow questions that we've had in the past, it, it tends to have been an acquisition. But it doesn't mean to say that the disposal is not examinable. So we need to be comfortable with both. But the focus to start with is on the acquisition of a sub. Okay. Now, when we look at the acquisition of a subsidiary, essentially there are two areas that we need to think of. So what you've got there within your notes, there are essentially two paragraphs that deal with it. Okay. Uh, first one is nice and straightforward uh, because what you've got there is that if I buy a subsidiary, I pay an amount of money. So there's a big cash outflow, isn't there, that goes out of the group. But don't forget that when we have acquired that subsidiary, we now consolidate it, don't we? And when we consolidate it, the assets and the liabilities are brought in. Now, that creates an issue with regards to the cash, because when we've spent 10 million, say, to acquire the subsidiary, we've then consolidated 1 million of cash coming in. So what we have to go through and do there is that the figure that you see within your investing activities is the net figure. So you need to look at the cash that goes out, net of the cash that comes in with regards to the acquisition or the disposal. Okay. Clearly, if it's an acquisition, it's likely to be net cash paid uh, because you've paid a large amount and then a smaller cash balance comes in. If it's there to do with a disposal, then it's likely to be a net cash receipt because cash comes in on disposal of the subsidiary and then a little bit of cash leaves as we no longer consolidate that subsidiary that's being disposed of. So the key first thing to do, and it's easy marks within the exam, is to go through there and look at the net cash inflow or outflow with regards to the disposal or acquisition of a subsidiary. Okay, it's one line item. You take two figures, you net them off into one. Okay, nice and simple. Second one's a little bit harder to get your head around, and it's the one that requires a lot more consideration within the exam. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're also going to have to make an additional adjustment to every asset and every liability that we consider when we look at the movement in those assets and liabilities to work out the cash figure. So let's just put in a very simple example. Nothing there than, you know, it's just something to, to draw up or just observe if you wish. Uh, and the example that we're going to do is just an example with, say, so land. So a small item of property planted equipment. Uh, there is no depreciation. Uh, we'll assume that it hasn't been revalued. So there's not a lot going on. OK, so what you've got there. Let's just say at the start of the year, so we've got there our opening balance. Is there, is it say at 10,000, isn't it? Closing balance, let's just pretend that we, we do not know what that closing balance actually is. But what has happened during the year, at any point in the year, early part of the year, back end of the year, right in the middle, it's up to you. Let's just say there that we have, the acquisition of a subsidiary and when we have the acquisition of the subsidiary that subsidiary has land at shall we say 3000 isn't it okay so if we're trying to go through there and look at let's just say the purchase of land during the year okay what's the cash outflow with regards to the purchase of land or if you like the purchase of property, plant and equipment, okay? Well, if we've got an opening figure of 10, okay, and we've acquired a sub with a balance of 3,000 on the land, then what we've got there is that we've got, is it our opening balance is 10,000? 
the sub acquisition that's being added on is 3000 so what we expect the balance to be if there was nothing else happening within the year and the expected balance at the end of the year would be 13000 wouldn't it okay However, that's not the case. What we've got there, let's just say that our actual figure that we have is 15,000. So that actual figure is higher than what we expected. So the difference that you have effectively is a balancing figure, isn't it, of two. If there's been no revaluation, if there has been no depreciation of land, which, which there never is, then that difference that we've calculated, is it the of 2000, must be there as the purchase of property, plant and equipment, isn't it? Okay. If you don't believe me that it is the purchase of PPE, and let's draw it up as a T account. Okay. So property, plant and equipment. Admittedly, it's just land. So it could get more complicated within the exam. But what you've got there, pardon me, is that you've got your opening figure. Is it there of 10,000? We've said that the closing figure is there. Is it as 15,000? We've got the acquisition of a sub during the year was there as 3,000 that we then consolidated. So that balancing figure is there, is it as 2,000? And that must be whereby we've credited the bank and debited my property, plant and equipment. Okay, and if we've credited the bank, then that is because we have purchased it. And that must be there, mustn't it, as an outflow. Much easier to understand, I think, with regards to T accounts. So when you're looking at things such as PPE, uh, tax payables, I prefer to go through there and draw up T accounts. Okay, uh, Just to get you into standard working mode, uh, when you're going through there, and looking at your working capital balances, so inventory, receivables, and payables. So remember, we need to look at the movement in those working capital balances, don't we? When we're looking at your cash generated from your operations as part of your indirect methodology, which is what we always see within the exam. Uh, when you're looking there at the indirect methodology, I would use the working that we've got there, okay? Similar to the working that we went through and did originally here, okay? So what we go through and do there is you take your opening balance for inventory receivables and payables. You've got the acquisition or disposal. So if it's an acquisition, you add the balance in. If it's a disposal, you will deduct it. That then gets you to your expected. You then compare it to the actual, and then you can start to see the movement, okay? Yeah, what the difference is. And whether that is then an increase or a decrease in inventory receivables or payables. Okay. So what I would go through and do is I would learn that working there. If you do, it's going to make your life that much simpler. Okay. Trust me. Okay. So let's go through, uh, have a look at the example, pull it all together. It's a brilliant example uh, looking at the acquisition of a subsidiary. Uh, so it says, show how the above would be dealt with in the consolidated statement of cash flows for the year ended. Is it December 2015? Okay. Uh, so what you've got there uh, is you can see the various bits and pieces of information with regards, is it towards top? Uh, you've got the statement of financial position. So we've got there, is it property, plant and equipment? Uh, inventory, receivables, and is it some payables uh, that we need to go through there and look at the movement? Obviously, the cash is the figure at the bottom, and we're not too too worried about that there. Okay, uh, we're looking here. Is it at the Pablo Group? Okay, and the information down below tells us that on the first of June, Pablo acquired all of the share capital of Juan for fifty million dollars. So there's going to be a nice 
big cash outflow, isn't there? there? Uh, as Pablo acquired Juan. But we need to be careful, don't we? Uh, because when we're looking at that cash payment of 50 million, uh, you need to be careful because we need to go through there, don't we? And look at the net figure. Okay, so the net purchase. So what you've got there is if we were going through and looking at the group statements of cash flows. Then what you would have there uh, is you would have, is it your operating activities? So remember, you would start off there, is it with PBT, whatever that may be, and make all your adjustments. We're going to be concerned with more inventory, receivables, and payables. Uh, so we will reference that through to working in a moment. Uh, once we've gone through and dealt with that, that's the operating activities. What about the within our investing activities? It's not the greatest straight line you've ever seen, is it? That's fractionally better. Uh, so what you've got there is you've got, is it the purchase of your subsidiary, the net cash? So did we pay 50, and I think it was cash of three. Let me just double check. Five, careful, Christopher. Uh, cash of five that came in, wasn't it? Okay. So cash of five. So the net cash is 45. Okay. Provided you get the right numbers. That's really straightforward. It's going to get you a mark, maybe even two within the exam. Okay, everybody happy with that bit there. Nice and straightforward. Yeah, we're told we purchased the sub for 50. Doesn't matter the date, it's during the year. We paid 50 and then cash of five came in. Okay, uh, let's go through then and think about the inventory receivables and payables and think about our standard workings. Uh, so if I'm going through and looking at my workings, leave the first column blank, and then the next three you have inventory, receivables, and payables. So we start off with our opening figures, don't we? The opening figures are there, just make sure we get them the right way around. Yep, 2014 there. So is it 195, 109, and 70? So 195, 109, and 70. Then what we've got there, I think there was an acquisition, wasn't there? So if we look at the acquisition, uh, you've got 8, 6, and 3. So is it 8, 6, and 3? So we can work out what is expected, isn't it? So is it 73, 115, and is it 203? You know my arithmetic mentally isn't too strong, so I shall just check. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, 109 plus 6, yep, correct, 70. I can, get, I can get the last one of 70 plus 3 is 73, okay? Uh, we then go through there, don't we, and compare that to the actual, okay? So if we go through there and look at the actual, it's 145, 130, and 85. So 145, 130, and 85. Okay, let's just double check. 145, 130, and 85. Excellent, all correct. Okay, once we've gone through and dealt with that, we can then begin to go through there and look at the movement, can't we? So you can see there that the actual is 145, the expected is 203. 
So the figure that you're looking at there is a 58 decrease in your inventory. Okay. If you look at your receivables, it's actually higher than we expected by 15. So that's an increase of 15. And if you look at your payables, the difference is 12. And there is an increase, isn't there, on your payables. There we go. So that's going through there, isn't it? And looking at the movement. So work out the number and then think about the movement. Okay, you're comparing what's expected to what has actually happened. Okay. If there is a reduction there in your inventory, uh, then that is saying that you've sold more inventory. So there is an inflow. Uh, if you look at your receivables and receivables have gone up, it means you haven't collected in your cash. So we treat that as an outflow, don't we? Okay, because it's saying, look, your sales have gone up, but you've not received the cash. So we need to remove that increase in sales. And then if your payables have gone up, that's a good thing, isn't it? It means you've not paid off your suppliers. It means you're keeping in the cash within your business. So we treat that as a, as a positive inflow figure. So what we've got there is that we have a 58 inflow. If I can get the right page. So inventory, it's a 58 inflow, wasn't it? Uh Receivables is a 15 outflow. And then your payables, I think, was it an inflow of 12? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. So that's vitally, vitally important. If you can get that, you're looking at one mark for each minimum, potentially two. Okay. Uh, so if two for each, that's six, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, you soon accumulate the marks on your statement of cash flows question. You accumulate them much quicker than you do on SFPs and profit or loss. Okay, excellent. I think that's pretty straightforward. And I'm not saying it's easy, but once you practice several questions, I think you should be pretty happy with it because you've got a standardised working to follow. Okay, and that standardised working to follow is there. The hard bit is this bit towards the bottom, isn't it? Getting the movement correct. Okay. Excellent. I suppose the only other thing that you could potentially do, and I don't think there's enough information, is that you could go through there and have, say, the purchase of property, plant and equipment, which could, again, be a potential working. So, again, you could draw up a T account. And I'm just going to show you effectively that the difficulties that you have with regards to PPE and why you should draw it up as a T account. So we've got our opening on the debit and our closing on the credit, haven't we? So the opening is 490, closing is 520. The only figure that we've got here is to do with the net assets and that there is 15. So in the absence of all information, you could work out The balancing figure couldn't we you know so what you would expect there is that the balancing figure is to go through there and look at the the bank figure isn't it okay if you were to work that out at this moment 490 plus 15 uh the balancing figure there is 15 isn't it okay so you would have there is it the purchase of property plant and equipment is 15 as an outflow that's assuming that there's nothing else within the question. There could be. You know, additional bits that you could have within the question is that you could have maybe some depreciation. Okay. You could have maybe a disposal. Uh, you could have maybe the revaluation. So that, you know, there's going to be quite a lot within a question to do with PPE that you could potentially be expected to adjust for, okay? 
the adjustments that you make are all to do with F7 adjustments, even though so that's F3 adjustments. But in the concept of looking at it on cash flows, it becomes very, very, very hard, I think. It becomes really challenging. One of the things that you've done since, oh, what was it, the second or maybe the third day that you looked at F3 uh, and your financial accounting and your fundamentals of it, you've done loads of PPE. But PPE and F2 tends to be quite a challenge, particularly when it comes to looking at your statements of cash flows. So just be aware of it. OK, other than that, I think what we've gone through and done is we've worked through everything there within the question. Uh, if you wanted, you, you could go through and talk about the cash and cash equivalents, couldn't you? You've got your opening cash of 75, uh, closing cash of 50. So there is a reduction in your cash and cash equivalent, is it, of 25 uh, but I'm not too worried about that. The focus on that question there is purely to go through there and think about the acquisition or the disposal of a sub. Clearly, here it was an acquisition. Uh, so the disposal, you just go through there and switch it round. Uh, in terms of the balances, you would deduct as opposed to going through and adding them in. Okay. The other tiny little bit, just before we go through and finish, is if you look at those net assets, make sure that if you're given values of the net assets that you make the adjustments based upon fair value don't make the adjustments based upon book value if book value is the same as fair value then that's fine but please make sure that if you're given a choice between book value and fair value of the net assets of the subsidiary that the figures that you use for your adjustments are the fair value figures got it good because if it crops up within a past exam question then it might be quite useful to use the fair value as opposed to the book value figures. Other than that, I'm going to say no more. Uh, and I'm going to leave you to just revise and recap what we've done so far in terms of the dividend paid to the NCI, the dividend received from the associate and the acquisition or the disposal of a subsidiary. Because what we're going to go through and do next is we're going to go through there and play around with a big comprehensive example.